G'day poker people. After the biggest downswing of my poker career, I finally made the wise decision to move back down in stakes and start grinding some 136 action. Upon arrival to the game, the host informs me, even though the game's already been running for 30 minutes, already most people in the game have over 1,000 in their stack, and they're already doing an uncapped buy into this game. So much for moving down in stakes. I buy into the game for $1,000 into what turns out to be one of the juiciest 136 games I have ever played. Make sure you stick around to the end of the video to see how much, if any, dint I made in that massive deficit I accrued in the last video. It's time for my shot at redemption. Let's go. Hey YouTube. <laughs> First hand up, let's rip into things. A loose aggressive low jack opens it up to 15, then a tight aggressive high jack calls. Then I'm in the big blind with the second best hand in all of poker, pocket kings. Let's bang it up. I raise it to 75, then the low jack and the high jack both call. So we're three ways to a flop of queen four deuce a rainbow. The action starts off on me and being out of position to two people, there's a lot of incentive to check, particularly with a loose aggressive opponent in the mix. Just trying to induce best from worst hands in general. I check it over to them, and then unfortunately, they both check back. Not quite what I wanted, but we do get to see a turn. The turn's a bad one. It's the ace of diamonds, putting out backdoor diamond. Kind of wishing I bet the flop now that we have to deal with an ace, but when I check it over to the low jack, he goes ahead and bets 200. The hijack folds, and now I don't think there's a lot of merit to call here against a loose aggressive opponent. They could be semi-bluffing with diamonds or just protection betting, a one pair type hand that we are ahead of. Wouldn't hate folding, but against a loose aggressive opponent, I'm not giving it up just yet. I throw in the call and then we're off to the river, which is the four of spades. Check it over to the villain again. Then they go ahead and bet 400. They're pretty gross spot, given that the opponent is loose aggressive. I do think they are gonna have some bluffs in their range. Miss diamonds makes sense, although we do block it with the king of diamonds, but could be running into just an ace. So really could go either way. Way, but as a man much wiser than myself once said, folding is boring. I throw in the call and then the opponent mucks his hands. Let's freaking go. What a way to start the sesh. Next up, under the gun, tight aggressive limps. Then I'm on the button with ace five of spades, raise it up to 20, get a call from a loose aggressive small blind and the limper calls as well. So we go three ways to a flop of king 10 six with two spades. I'll take a nut flush draw. That's a pretty good flop for us. When the action checks to me, could go either way with betting or checking this flop. Definitely want to have some nut flush draws in your check back range on the flop because it's just nice to see a free turn TBH. So I do decide to check back. Having said that though, there's been two opportunities where I could have taken a passive or aggressive line and I've chosen the passive option both times. Maybe I'm being a bit of a passive fish so far this session. Need to work on that definitely, but regardless, we do get that free turn and it's the jack of spades. Let's freaking go. We make the nuts on the turn when the action checks to me. Obvious bet here. Want to start building a pop. I go ahead and make it 40 and then the small blind calls and under the gun folds. So we see the river, which is the eight of diamonds. The small blind checks it over to me. So there's a four liner to a nine now. This is going to be a spot where we want to bet a polarized range. Either we have a hand that's a straight or better or a complete air ball bluff. We do have a lot of bluffs on this board, basically anything with a naked ace of spades. So I go ahead and use an overbet sizing here. I bang it up to 200 and then the opponent takes a little bit before throwing in that call. Let's freaking go. We show the nuts and they end up mucking their hands. Next up, a loose aggressive short stack opens it to 20 under the gun and then no less than three people call. And I'm in small blind with eight, seven of hearts. I don't really mind doing any three of the options here. Um, having said that though, calling's probably the worst, having to play a super multi-way pot out of position with a middling hand. Uh, that's no fun, but I'm being a f passive fish this session, so that's exactly what I did. I threw in the call and I hate this play. Should be folding or squeezing and probably just folding against a short stack who's likely to call a flight. So I end up throwing in the call like a fish and then the big blind and straight call as well. So we have a seven way pot here and the flop is queen six four with two hearts. So we do make a combo draw. So I check it over to the pre-flop aggressor. So the under the gun C bets 65 and then they get three folds and the action's back on me and I think there's a no-brainer decision to check raise here with so much equity and I mean with the under the gun having such a short stack. They're not really we're not really folding if they bet the turn anyway, so might as well check raise now and try and realize a bit of fold equity if they are just betting with like Jack High or something. 
Like I said, passive fish this session, I just threw in the call and then the big line and straddle fold. So we do get to see a turn, which is the four of clubs. Not a great turn. We don't get there. And we're dead to full houses now, but I check it over the under the gun player who does rip it all in for 103. And I mean, getting this price, we're going nowhere, even though we're hating it. I threw in the call and then the opponent shows ace queen. So we're not completely dead. We do have a few outs and we've got the live run out and the river is the four of spades. So that's not good. They make a full house on the river and we make our money go bye bye. Another one. The low jack goes ahead and opens it up to 20 and then no less than three players call. And then I'm in the straddle with pocket kings, baby. I squeeze it up to 160 and then everyone folds except for a player on the small blind who seems like they're on tilt a bit. I think even they would admit that they were a bit tilted here. They throw in the call. So we go heads up to a flop of 9-7 deuce with two diamonds when the small blind checks it over to me. Time for me to stop being a passive fish. I go ahead and see about 150 here and then they throw in the call so we get to see a turn which is the nine of clubs when the small blind checks it over to me on this turn i'm going to want to bet a pretty polarized range with a large sizing and even though i've been criticizing myself for being a passive fish so far this session i actually think betting here will be a pretty colossal mistake if i was going to use a large sizing just because i have to worry that my opponent does have a 9x hand so i check it back and we get to see a free river which is the jack of clubs when the small blind checks it over to me again this time it's a no-brainer bet here just going to try and get a bit of a value and hope the opponent doesn't check raise because that'd be pretty sick. So I go ahead and bet 300 and then the opponent calls. I show my kings and they put their hand in the muck. Let's go. So the next hand, the same tilting player opens under the gun for 15. Then I'm in the hijack with pocket sixes and really could be doing any three of the options here. Probably folding would be the best, but having said that, I've got an inkling that I want to play with the small blind in a heads up pot. So I decide to three bet it up here to try and ISO them. I make it 50. Probably a bit too loose with the sixes. You can get crushed if people start four betting you. But I make it 50. And then the plan completely backfires when both the button and the big blind, as well as the original razor call. So, so much for ISOing the under the gun razor. We go four ways to a flop of jack, eight, six. So we do hit our set after our plan backfired. It re unbackfired on all the other opponents. The action checks to me. I think I'm going to go ahead and see bet my set here. I go ahead and make it 70 and then only the button calls. So it heads up to a turn, which is the five of spades, which does complete seven nine as straight, but still thing I want to continue to bet here, try and get max value against a heart draw or a Jack X type hand. So I go ahead and bet 220 and then the button calls. Then the river, it's a nine of diamonds. Ugh, absolutely awful river. There's a four line and it was seven now. So if I was going to bet here, I think it's similar to the trip with the previous hand, I just want a better polarized range, and a set is pretty mediocre value when E7 makes a straight. So I check it over to the opponent who checks back pretty quickly. I show my set, and then they throw the hand in the mark. As you can probably tell, this next hand occurred directly after the previous one, and also the straddle's on this hand, but it's actually for 15 instead of 6, which is pretty sweet. We just 2.5x the stakes of this game, so the action falls to my low jack, and I have to open a bit bigger here. When I have queen 10 of spades, I go ahead and make it 50, and then I get no less than three different callers. So we go four ways to a flop again, and it is king 6-3. All spades. Scrap. We absolutely flop a flush again and are running fire hot this session. When the action checks to me, I go ahead and see bet 70 for value. Yeah, I'd say this is a value bet. And then I get called by the small blind out in the straddle. So we go three ways to a turn still, which is the king of diamonds. And then the small blind decides to lead out for 175. The straddle folds and the action's back on me. And I think there's nothing to do here but call. I think the opponent's going to have a lot of king X hands in their range. But on the off chance that they do have a full house, I just don't want to fully commit my stack against that range. Also want to keep their bluffs in that are trying to represent king X as well. So I throw in the Call, and then we are heads up to a river which is the eight of clubs the small blind keeps betting they go ahead and make it 350 now i think at this point it's a really interesting decision whether i want to raise for value or just call i think the opponent might be able to fold a king x hand to a raise here 
So it's a pretty close decision in my opinion. Let me know what you were doing in the comments below, but I was sick of being a passive fish this session. So I did decide to bump it up. I go ahead and make it 850. And then the opponent is in the tank and they're in there for probably a good minute or so before throwing in the call. I show my queen 10 and then the opponent shows a seven of spades. So we almost got them to fold the nut flush, um, guessing is what the tank was about. Probably a bit too thin to try and get value from a king X or a worse flush, but I don't want to be a results oriented fish. Let me know what you think in the comments below. The next hand, we've got a $10 straddle on as well as a $20 double straddle. Let's go. We get two limps and I'm on the button with ace queen of hearts. I go ahead and iso raise it to 110 and then a tight aggressive small blind three bets it up to 500. The action folds back to me. We're about 1.5k effective and I'm either ripping it all in or folding here and it's entirely opponent dependent on how tight I think the opponent is a three betting and in this spot, I do think the opponent is actually B a bit tighter with their three bets just because I'm ISOing over a bunch of limbs. Because of that soul raid, I actually do decide to fold the ace queen of hearts here. Wouldn't hate ripping it in. I think it's the worst play in the world, but in this spot, I just thought the opponent was strong. And then after I fold, the opponent was actually kind enough to show me they did have ace king. So we definitely decided to fold there. Next hand, we're back to the regular old $6 straddle, and then the loose aggressive under the gun player opens it up to 30. They get a call from the low jack and the small blind. Then I'm in the big blind with ace queen offsuit. I go ahead and three bet it up to 200, and then the initial raise of calls, the low jack falls, and the small blind calls. So we go three ways to a flop of a jack nine three with two clubs. The small blind checks it over to me, and we do have a pretty good hand to see bet bluff with, with the two overs and the backdoor nut flush draw. Having said that though, betting into two people with a bunch of bluffs uh, can be a bit spewy so I just decide to check it hopefully get a free turn and when the under the gun checks we do get that free turn and I'm glad we did because it's the ace of spades let's go when the small blind checks it over to me definitely want to start building a pot I go ahead and bet 200 the under the gun player calls and the small blind folds so we're off to a river which is the ace of diamonds now again it's another ball where top pair paired the same thing I said about the trip nines is also going to be true about trip aces here want to use the polarized betting size if we did have a bluff like king 10 or king queen we would use that larger sizing to try and get my opponent off of a single pair type hand since it's going to be hard for them to invest a lot of money if we're taking that line with a lot of bluffs we should be using it with our strong hands like ace queen here so i go ahead and bet 800 and then the opponent is in the tank and they're thinking and they're thinking and they're thinking for probably a good minute straight or so and i just know they've got a jack or a nine and they're considering hero calling and then they eventually end up folding. Uh, so it's not what we want to see. I wonder if we did get a bit too greedy with the larger sizing. Let me know what you think in the comments. Next hand, a tight aggressive button opens it to 30 and then both the blinds call and I'm in the straddle with 7-5 uh, of spades. I think it's a good spot to throw in the call, closing the action. Don't have to worry about anyone squeezing or something. So that's what I do. I throw in the call and then we're four ways to a flop of king 4-3 with two spades. Let's go. We do flop a combo draw yet again. I still go ahead and check it over to the pre-flop aggressor naturally. Then they see bet 40 and then the small blind and the big blind both call. So now the action's back on me and I actually think this is a great spot to check raise as a semi bluff. Not only do we have a lot of equity, even if we do get called, but I think the button betting a small size, their C bet range is probably going to be a bit wider and going to include a lot of hands that can't continue to a bunch of aggression. I feel a similar way about the big blind and small blinds calling range as well. So that's what I do. I check raise it up to 150. Then the button calls and both the blinds fold. So we do get to see that turn, which is the five of hearts. Great turn, gives us a bunch of extra equity against our opponent's one pair hands but I still think it's a good spot to try and bluff my opponent off of their one pair hands just because it's going to be so hard for like ace king and king queen to keep calling when I put pressure on particularly since I'm going to have a bunch of two pair plus hands in this situation as well as ac Ducey just got there if I did check raise that on the flop so I keep betting at it I go ahead and make it 225 and then the button folds pretty quickly let's go
Next hand, the loose aggressive button opens it up to 20. And then I'm in the small blind with seven, six of clubs. Could go either way between three betting and just calling here. But I'm definitely not being a passive fish anymore. If anything, I'm probably being an aggro fish Arr. at this point. I go ahead and three bet it up to a 125. And then T money calls in the straddle and the initial raiser calls as well. So we go three ways to a flop of jack six, three with two spades. With a bit of showdown value here, I don't really want to inflate the pot too much, particularly when my opponent's going to call with a lot of pairs that are stronger than us. So I go ahead and check it here and both of the opponents check as well. And then the turn is the seven of spades. So great turn. We do make two pair, even though the front door flush does get in. Probably could go ahead and start C betting, trying to build a pot here. Out of position to two people can be a bit dicey though. And it'd be great to have a two pair hand in your check call range, particularly out of position to two loose aggressive opponents. So I take that line here. Could go either way though. I check it and then T money goes ahead and bet. It's 250, the button folds and I call. So we're heads up to the river, which is the four of diamonds, awful river now. There's a four liner to any five out there. And I go ahead and check it over to T Money. T Money tanks a little bit before going ahead and betting 400. And look, in this spot, I actually think it's a mandatory call here. Obviously, raising is going to be way too thin. The opponent's going to have a bunch of flushes and 5x here. But because it's T Money, I know that they will likely be pouncing on my weakness of checking on the flop and I just need some strong hands to check call with here because they are a more aggressive thinking opponent who is going to likely try and bet me off my weak range. So I throw in the call and then the opponent shows ace four and I end up scooping this hand. Let's go. Next hand, the straddle is actually not on for whatever reason, but the under the gun player does decide to raise it up to 15. And the action falls to my cutoff with king queen off suit. I go ahead and three bet it up to 40 here, which I actually think is pretty poor sizing so yeah I actually have no idea what's going on there besides me just being an inconsistent peanut but I three bet it up to 40 and then a loose aggressive button calls pay money in the big blind calls as well as the initial razor call so we do go four ways to a flop which is pretty typical in these three bet pots by the way and the flop is at king nine six all rainbow the action checks to me and I actually decide to check back here I think we have a pretty middling strength hand against three different opponents and really can't get that much value so I'd rather just try and induce bluffs with the check so i check it and the button checks as well so we get that free turn and good thing we did because it's the queen of hearts let's go we make two pair the big blind decides to actually bet out for 100 the end of the gun play calls now pretty interesting whether i want to raise or just call here obviously have to be somewhat concerned that either of the opponents could have jack 10 offsuit so there's some worry about value owning ourselves if we raise so i just decide to call in position for those reasons i think if i was out of position i probably would try and raise just for a bit more equity denial so i throw in the call with the button folds so with three ways to a river which is the ace of clubs definitely not a great river we do lose to a bunch of better two pairs now so the big blind checks and the under the gun player bets they go ahead and make it 260 and this is a pretty gross spot for me not only am i worried about the under the gun having jack 10 i also think the big blind could check raise jack 10 here all damn day particularly since i know i'm going to have a lot of two pairs that want to bet similar story with under the gun uh, and i do think the under the gun is going to have a bunch of two pairs ace queen ace king wouldn't be totally out of the picture ace nine so really if i was to call here i would have to hope that the under the gun play is betting a worse two pair hand or a bluff and that the big blind isn't trapping or potentially check raising as a bluff themselves so because of all that considered i actually think the best play probably is just to fold the king queen here but passive fish session for me i threw in the call and then the big blind folds thank god and then the under the gun player shows queen six for a worse two pair so a i'm very very happy that i was able to win this hand even though i think probably folding the river as nitty as it is might be the better play Next up, we've got the $10 straddle on again, and T Money opens a button to 30. Small blind calls, and I'm in the big blind with Ace 10 offsuit. Against T Money's open, I think we're good here with the Ace 10. I go ahead and three bet it up for value to 150. And then in true form to this game, the straddle, the button, and the small blind all call. So, yet another four way three bet pot, and the flop is Queen Queen 4 with two hearts. Pretty colossal miss for us. So, when the action checks to me, I check it, and then the straddle and T Money check as well. So, we do get to see a free turn, which is the nine of spades. The action checks all the way to T Money, and this time he decides to bet out. He goes ahead and makes 250. Small blind folds. Now the action's back on me, and I do think the T Money is going to have a bunch of 9x hands in their range that they absolutely will be betting for value here. But I think that's about it as far as value bets go. I do think if they had a queen or 4x plus on the flop, they probably would just check that when the action gets to them, being that they have that loose aggressive image that's going to try and get paid off. So I do think we're going to be ahead a lot here if they do have a lot of bluffs like Jack 10 or even like 10 8 suited. Wouldn't 
doesn't surprise me at all. So I think the chances we got here are pretty likely with the Ace 10. So I do throw in the call and then the straddle folds, thank God, because <laughs> if they called, we're cooked. So we do get to see the river, which is the six of diamonds. I check it over the T man who just reluctantly checks back. I show my Ace 10 and they end up mucking their hand. Let's go. A loose aggressive short stack cutoff goes ahead and open limps, then I'm on the button. Ace queen offsuit, I raise it up to 25. Loose aggressive small blind calls, and then T money in the straddle, three bets it up to 100. The short stack cutoff actually calls. Now, being that the cutoff only has about 380 when they started the hand, and we do have a very strong hand like Ace queen here that I think is going to be ahead of the range of hands. The T man is three betting out of the straddle. I think it's a four bet spot to try and ISO the short stack. So I go ahead and four bet it up to 380 and then the small blind folds and team money actually decides to call and then the cutoff calls as well so we have a locked pot in the middle we're playing for a dry side pot against the team money in the straddle and the flop is ace four three rainbow so pretty good flop we do hit our ace which is always a good feeling when the pot's already this big so the straddle checks it over to me and i'm gonna have a range better in this spot so i go ahead and make it 250 and then the straddle calls so we've got a 500 side pot now and the turn is the two of hearts team money checks it over to me. It's not the best turn in the world. There is a four line until five. Team money is going to have a lot of hands like five, six suited, pocket fives, ace five, all make a lot of sense. So I think this might be a good spot to play a bit of pot control, a bit of protection. So I do check it back and we get the free river, which is the jack of clubs. Definitely not the best river in the world. We now lose to ace jack. When team money checks it over to me though, pretty close spot when whether we want to go for a bit of small value here. I think it's somewhat possible that team money will call a bet here with like ace 10 or ace nine, but there's some chance they hero fold those hands being that we're going to have a lot of ace king and ace queen here plus we have to worry about them having ace king or them trapping a five or a set so i decide to check it back i show my hand and then both the opponents fault so we scoop a big pot here but i do wonder if we missed out on a bit of thin value on the river there after 12 hours and 40 minutes of play, I really like that I put in that amount of volume, particularly in a game this juicy. I stayed until the game broke at about 8 a.m., but I have to admit, I was way too passive, way too often in this game. Not only did I miss some good opportunities to make thin value bets and to deny equity to my opponents, but also some good opportunities to make some folds as well. I think my win had more to do with a combination of me putting in the high volume in a juicy game and then just good old fashioned run good, more so than it had to do with the individual decisions I made in hands, which I do think could have been much better. So for this session, I'm going to give myself a B grade. Also, I did mention that I did run really good this session. I made $6,350 over the course of these 12 hours and 40 minutes, which is definitely moving in the right direction to dig myself out of the $37,000 hole I dug in the previous video. But I'm not there yet, not even close. So make sure you subscribe to my channel to get the next video out to see where I go forward from here and if I can continue to dig myself out of this hole. Until then, I'm out of here. Peace.